when most think of Long Island, I'm almost sure that the Statue of Liberty, ferry rides, along with New York pizza, and cool ocean breezes might be what comes to mind. However, there is a more sinister side to Long Island. Every local there knows of or has heard tale of the multiple killings that have amassed over the years. This killer could very possibly be one of the worst serial killers of all time. Cementing a spot next to the major killers, Bundy, BTK, and Jeffrey Dahmer. Even surpassing them in comparison to possible number of victims. Today we are talking about the Long Island Killer, the Craigslist Ripper, or more famously, the Gilgo Beach Killer. Stay tuned, as some believe he is actually a police officer who was assigned to the case. We will present all the facts and you can decide. Before diving into this further, you are tuning into Coffee with History. If solved, unsolved, heroic, or just plain mysterious is your thing, make sure to join us as we go back in time and discover the past. On this channel we will post about anything we find notable. We are always up for suggestions, just drop them in the comments. For a chance to be featured in future videos if we end up covering your subject. Without further ado this is today's harrowing tale. The Gilgo Beach Killer The Gilgo Beach Killer is an unidentified suspected serial killer who is believed to have murdered between 10 and 16 people over a period of nearly 20 years and to have disposed of their bodies in areas on the south shore of Long Island. Most of the known victims were sex workers who advertised on Craigslist. Note to mention here some even theorize that the same unidentified killer is responsible for at least four killings in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It's speculated by authorities that there is links between the eastbound strangler and the Gilgo Beach killer. Some say the similarities are imperviable leaving no doubt to deny that the two are not one in the same. Both serial killings are unidentified to this day. The victim's remains were found over a period of months in 2010 and 2011, after the disappearance of Shannon Gilbert resulted in a police search of the area along the Ocean Parkway, near the remote beach towns of Gilgo and Oak Beach in Suffolk County. The remains of four victims, the Gilgo Four, were found within a quarter of a mile of each other near Gilgo Beach in December 2010. Six more sets of remains were found in March and April 2011 in Suffolk County and Nassau County. Police believe the latter sets of remains predate the four bodies found in December 2010. Shannon Gilbert's remains were found a year after the remains of the Gilgo Four were discovered. Her cause of death remains contested, with police claiming accidental drowning while an independent autopsy determined possible strangulation. The audio recording to 911 would pose even more evidence of foul play. And not just a simple drowning case. State police? Yeah, there's somebody after me. I'm sorry? There's somebody after me. Where are you? There's somebody after me. Okay, where are you? There's somebody after me. Where are you, ma'am? I don't know. You're driving right now? No, I'm inside the house. I'm sorry? I'm inside the house. What house? I don't know. Can you trace where I am? I'm sorry? Can you trace where I am? No, I can't. What's your callback number you're calling from? Huh? What phone number are you calling from? What is after me? A month after her disappearance, the Suffolk County Police Department's Missing Persons Bureau asked Officer John Marlia to search for Shannon with his trained cadaver dog, a German Shepherd named Blue. Over the course of summer 2010, Marlia unsuccessfully searched the gated beach community where Gilbert had last been seen. He made a new attempt at a search on December 11, staying close to the shoulder of the parkway. Malia based his choice of search area on FBI data indicating that dumped bodies are frequently found close to roadways. Despite thick vegetation and a light layer of snow, the cadaver dog alerted to a scent which the pair tracked to a skeleton in a disintegrating burlap bag. The remains were later identified as Melissa Bartholomew's. Police discovered three additional bodies while searching the scene for further evidence. 
the bodies of the four victims, Maureen Brainerd, Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman and Amber Costello, were found approximately 500 feet from each other. In March 2011, the partial remains of Jessica Taylor were found along Ocean Parkway. Eight years earlier, in 2003, Taylor's partial remains had been found in Manorville, New York in Suffolk County. The next month, in April 2011, police discovered three additional sets of remains, an unidentified female toddler, an unidentified Asian person, and Valerie Mack, whose partial remains, like those of Jessica Taylor, had been previously found in Manorville years earlier in November 2000. Two more bodies were found in Nassau County, an unidentified woman whose partial remains had previously been found on Fire Island in 1996, and an unidentified woman with a distinctive tattoo of peaches who was later found to be the mother of the unidentified toddler found in Suffolk. On May 9, 2011, police speculated that because of similarities in the cases, Valerie Mack, who at the time was unidentified, and Jessica Taylor may have been murdered by a second, separate killer. On November 29, 2011, however, police announced that they believed one person to be responsible for all ten murders, and that the perpetrator is almost certainly from Long Island. The single killer theory stems from common characteristics between the condition of the remains and forensic evidence related to the bodies. In June 2011, Suffolk County Police announced a $25,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in the Long Island murders. Shannon Gilbert's remains were finally located in Oak Beach in December 2011, 19 months after her disappearance. The cause of her death is contested. All of the murders remain unsolved. On December 10, 2015, Suffolk County Police Commissioner Tim Sini announced that the FBI had officially joined the investigation. The announcement came one day after former police chief James Burke was indicted for civil rights violations and conspiracy. Burke, who resigned from the department in October 2015, was said to have blocked FBI involvement in the Gilgo Beach killer cases for years. The FBI had previously assisted in the search for victims but had never officially been a part of the investigation. In November 2016, Burke was sentenced to 46 months in federal prison for assault and conspiracy. Evidence of a much more devastating nature, in the form of personal character witnesses and one-on-one -on -one encounters with the man James Burke, do more than just make him guilty of, of assault and conspiracy. According to first-hand accounts, by Christopher Loeb. The same year Burke became police chief, Loeb, who was then using heroin, was arrested for stealing a duffel bag from Burke's car. The bag, Loeb said, contained sex toys and pornography, and what he claims appeared to be a snuff film. However no further investigation went into the former police chief after his sentencing in 2016. A snuff film, sex toys and hired sex workers by James, claiming to have had violent experiences with the man. Seems enough to me to continue the investigation. However, authorities did not believe it to be the case. No further investigation into the former police chief has taken place at this time. However, police did give another possible suspect on September 12, 2017, Suffolk County Prosecutor Robert Bianca Villa from the County District Attorney's Office announced that John Bitrolf, a carpenter from Manorville, Long Island, was a suspect in at least one of the Gilgo Beach murders. Bitrolf had been convicted in May of that year of the murders of two sex workers in 1993 and 1994. In July 2014, he was charged with the murders of Rita Tongredi and Colleen McNamee. He is also a suspect in the murder of a third woman, Sandra Costilla. Bitrolf became a suspect in the unsolved murders after his brother, Timothy Bitrolf, was partially matched to DNA found on the bodies in 2013. Timothy Bitrolf submitted the sample after violating an unrelated order of protection in 2013. On July 5, 2017, Bitrolf was found guilty of Tom Greddy and McNamee's murders. He was sentenced to two consecutive 25 years to life sentences on September 12, 2017. He is imprisoned at Clinton Correctional Facility. However, no more supporting evidence at this time can link the either James Burke or John Bitrolf to the Gilgo Beach murders. 
and to this day this case remains completely unsolved, with only theories and speculation surrounding the very controversial deaths of multiple young women.